Creating a storybook villain is one of the most exciting things you can do while writing a story. It's always been one of the most interesting aspects for me. There's so many factors to consider. I don't really believe anyone is ever born dark or evil. I do believe that circumstances from the day we are born are likely to lead us down a dark road. Too many raised voices too many angry words, violence, neglect, extreme poverty. It's all the beginnings of a perfect villain arc. My villains are never simple. I don't think they can ever be considered simple. Too much has happened in their twisted, convoluted lives. In my Dwellers Beneath the Arches series, the characters are products of a broken society. They've been raised in the most unfortunate of circumstances. Poverty, hunger, neglect, trauma. In some special cases, one or a couple of the characters are the result of leaving mental health needs unchecked. Now, don't come for me. I'm not saying mental health issues create fantastic villains. But I do address how unchecked mental health crises can lead to an individual committing the most unspeakable acts. Some in society are quick to label them monsters, while others who understand the complexities of severe mental health issues understand them better. One of my favourite characters to write in the Dwellers Beneath the Archers series is a character called Nanette. Even her fellow villains are afraid of her. Watching their words, watching every step, afraid to reveal themselves to her. I found Nanette a bit unnerving to write at first. Why? It dawned on me that she reminded me of some of the girls I'd worked with during my short stint as a support worker, working with troubled children and teenagers. There was always a mixture of fear and trepidation in the air. You never knew what they were going to do next. Reading their case file histories, was always heartbreaking. As you realise, they never stood a chance. My earlier stories were always filled with the silliest, softest villains you'd ever read. I once created a villain who left a neighbour's gate open because he just didn't like her. That was a story on the villain arc. Chickens escaping via an open garden gate. I'm so glad I can laugh about it now. I am happy to say that with time and experience, my villains have become darker and I've written them to show the complexities and nuances that exist in all of us. The way in which one incident affecting two people in the most traumatic manner can have a very profound effect on their villain arc. One, choosing to unleash their anger on the world by stealing cars and beating people up, and the other simply choosing to destroy the world and everything in it. The former can still have a redemption arc. He or she can choose to volunteer, give back to society, seek therapy, but the latter is too far gone. Any hope of redemption is destroyed. I like to give glimpses into their internal workings as I write. I must admit that the more experience I had with troubled teens, also known as emotionally complex young people, the more I realised the villain arc was not so simple. They usually experience a push-pull on their emotions. They want to hurt someone and know the amount of pain and devastation it will cause, and for a while, they are conflicted. Will they choose good or evil? That was one of the motivating factors in writing villains. Seeking to understand what they do and why they are the way they are. Humans aren't simple. We're very complex. This is not to make an excuse. 
or excuse the actions of the villain, but rather to have an understanding, however small, of why they do what they do and seeing what they might do next. Then, there are those in our society who are born and display darkness from the very beginning. They are instantly branded evil. They are the bad ones. The evil is there from the start and there will never be a push-pull or a chance of redemption. They are forever cast into the darkness. I don't enjoy writing them as much as they are too predictable. They will be forever dark and will never come into the light. Whenever they pause to reflect, you wonder if this is it. Are they finally showing a glimpse of humanity? They seem to be doing so, and their hopes are lifted as readers. But just as they've raised our hopes, so they will dash them. They are the ultimate villain, and we can never truly understand what makes them tick. I had characters like that in my Dwellers series, and you knew they could never be trusted. You'd always be in danger. They kept you on your toes whenever their names were mentioned. Your stomach tightened, your heart raced, and you felt a darkness overcome you. And you would never be quite comfortable with them until the danger had passed. So, I like writing villains somewhere in the middle. Dark, traumatized with an internal rage that always threatens to spill over. There is always an internal struggle and they know their deeds are bad. But like that old African saying, a child will burn the village down to fill its warmth. This character seeks to attract the attention it needs by lashing outwards sometimes with devastating consequences. Now, as I write my heathen series, all about witches, warlocks and magical creatures from across the seas, I can explore and expand on my villains. Create villains from across many nations and world tribes and have fun doing so, whilst ultimately ensuring I never get caught in the chaos, as they are told in story form only.